In section 8.7.2, we're going to cover a really important formula. This formula will actually calculate the payment on a mortgage. Now, the good news about this formula is that we've already seen it before. This is the exact same formula that we use to calculate a car payment. The mathematics are the same, but remember a mortgage is generally reserved for a home loan or a loan for the purpose of buying a home or property, and it is generally a long-term loan such as 15 to 40 years. So let's review this formula. The payment on an amortized loan, now remember an amortized loan is a loan in which part of each payment goes to cover principal and the other part goes to interest. Now the uh, variables here are the same as they were when we covered these with cars. P represents our payment, our regular payment. A is the amount of the loan. R is the rate of interest. And you know by now that has to be in decimal form. N is the number of payments. per year, and this is equal to the compounding period, like we saw with compound interest, and T is the term of the loan or the time, and that always has to be measured in years. Again, this formula is the same formula we used to calculate the car payment in the previous section. So hang on to that formula, even outside of this class, it will be useful to you in calculating your own car payment and in calculating your own home payment as you shop around for those big purchases. All right, let's run an example of buying a home. Let's suppose that a home costs $85,000. A 5% down payment and one point are required at closing. Assume a 30-year note at 8% interest. So do notice this is a long-term loan, much longer than a car loan which is anywhere between two and six years to possibly eight. This is a 30 year note. Also observe that there's some fees that we're gonna have to pay at closing. That is up front at the point of sale. We have a 5% down payment and we have one point, remember that's 1% of the loan amount which we pay to the lender. And our rate of interest for the loan is 8%. So let's calculate first the down payment. We have a 5% down payment. So we need to calculate 5%, that's 0 0.05 of, remember of means multiply, $85,000. So let's see what our down payment is going to be. 0 0.05 times 85,000. That gives us $4,250. So a down payment is usually something that you have to save up for over time because this is cash that is required at closing. Now, the good thing about making a down payment is we are paying zero interest on that down payment. That money is directly applied to the house of the to the price of the house. And now we're already beginning to build what's called equity in our home. That means you own $4,250 worth of that home. Again, that's called equity. Um, if you sell the home, then you're going to be able to recap your equity. Okay, moving along, find the amount of the mortgage. Well, the amount of the mortgage is going to be the price of the home minus our down payment. So whatever is left after we make that down payment. So we're gonna take 85,000 and subtract 4,250, and that gives us $80,750, 80,750. So that is what we need to borrow from the lender. Now, before we get into calculating the house payment, there's one more hoop we have to jump through. There is a fee that we have to pay to the lender. This particular loan setup has one point required at closing. So remember, one point is code for 
1% of the loan amount. Now, the down payment, this 5%, was applied to the price of the home. However, one point, we're paying 1% of the amount that we're actually borrowing from the lender. So we need to calculate 1%, that's 0 .01, of $80,750. Now notice we're multiplying by 0.01. Easy way to do this is simply move our decimal two places to the left. So in this case, $807.50. So this means altogether at closing, we're going to need approximately $5,000 in cash. Part of that goes to our down payment. Part of that is going to pay the lender. Now we're ready to calculate our monthly payment. To calculate our monthly payment, we're going to use our big fancy formula. Remember, this is the same formula that we would use for calculating a car payment, so it should be familiar at this point. So the amount of our loan is $80,750. Remember from the problem, the rate was stated to be 8%, so we're going to plug that in as 0 0.08. We are making monthly payments, that means N is 12, 12 payments per year. The compounding period for the interest is also 12 times per year. Um, filling it in down here, we have another 0 0.08 over 12. Exponent negative N is 12. And T is time or the term of the loan. This is a 30-year note. So plugging this into our calculator will give us our payment. All right, are you curious? Let's see what our house payment is going to be. 80750 times 0 .08 divided by 12. Remember, I want to type the whole formula in all at once so I don't get any rounding error. The big fraction bar goes in as divided by. Make sure you get all of the parentheses recorded here in your calculator. And remember, as soon as you get outside these exponents, hit your caret key to get up in the exponent position and use the negative in parentheses at the bottom of your keypad. The other minus is the operation. Use my right arrow key to get out of the exponent and close parentheses. Okay, let's see what our uh, payment would be. Looks like 538.33. So $538.33 on this uh, $80,000 loan. This payment will cover principal and interest. Okay, before we get too excited, we have to consider that in addition to the principal and interest, we also have to consider the monthly cost of homeowners insurance and real estate taxes. Let's take that into account on this example. Suppose that the annual cost of homeowners insurance is $900 and annual real estate taxes are approximately 2550 So that price depends on neighborhood. This price depends on a particular company. If these are to be paid annually, what would the monthly payment, including the loan, insurance, and taxes be? Well, if on an annual basis, we're gonna owe 2550 for real estate taxes, and $900 for homeowner's insurance, this is going to give us a, an annual fee of $3,450. We want to figure out what that is monthly. So we're going to take this $3,450 and divide it by 12. That gives us $287.50. This is tacked on to our payment. This part goes into the escrow account. So our total monthly payment then would be the loan payment, which covers principal and interest, plus 
homeowners insurance, and real estate taxes. Let's add those two together and see what we come up with. 538.33 plus 287.50. We end up with $825.83. That would be the payment that we make. That amount would not change month to month. How it is allotted does change month to month. So I'm going to write a check or I'm going to have an automatic draft, whatever, of $825.83 coming out of my bank account every month. $287.50 of that is going to be separated and put into the escrow account and saved up so that when these two when these two bills come due, we have the funds there to pay them. Then this $538.33, which is part of our payment, Part of it is going to go to principal and part of it is going to go to interest. So there's a lot involved in this monthly payment. It's applied in different ways, but the way I experience it, it's the same fee every single month. So as you're budgeting for home ownership, make sure that in addition to your monthly payment, you're aware of these other costs. Next question, how much interest will be paid over the 30 years? Now, remember, the payment that came out of the formula is the part that covers principal and interest. So it's that that I'm going to use to calculate the interest paid over 30 years. So first of all, let's figure out what was the out-of-pocket expense over these 30 years for the loan. So we have been paying $538.33, 12 times per year for 30 years. So the total amount that we are paying, 538.33, 12 times a year for 30 years, we paid in $193,798.80. One ninety three, seven ninety eight, eighty. Did I remember that correctly? Looks good. Now pause for just a minute. Do you remember the price of the home? The home that we bought cost eighty five thousand dollars. We financed it for a very long period of time, and for this eighty five thousand dollar home, we end up paying. $193,798.80 for that loan. If you've never gone through the home buying purchase, be prepared for that. It is a shocker to hear about that. Now, how much interest, how much of that went to interest? Well, if out of our pocket came this big sum of money and the loan amount, not the price of the home, but the loan amount, remember that was this $80,750 the amount that we actually borrowed from the bank. That's the principal that we paid back. Let's subtract that from the total cost of the loan, and we'll see how much of our monthly payments went to interest. $113,048.80. $113,048.80. So, the price of the home, remember, was $85,000. So because this was a long-term loan, we end up paying higher than the price of the home to interest. That'll make your stomach turn a little bit, right? So how can you avoid such high costs for interest? One possible way is to choose a shorter term loan. Let's change it a little bit. We're going to keep the same interest rate. We're going to keep the same loan amount, but we're going to change it from a 30-year note to a 15-year note. So we're going to go back and use this payment formula again. And we're going to recalculate what our payment would be for, 15, for a 15 year loan. So we're still gonna plan on borrowing the $80,750. Interest rate is 0 0.08, 12 payments per year. The only difference is right here with the T, we're gonna make it 15 years. 
So let's plug this in and see what we come up with. Okay, here we go. Our payment, $771.69. So notice we have shortened the term of the loan. We're going from a 30-year note to a 15-year note, but our payment is higher. For the 30-year note, we're not going to look at the value including the homeowner's insurance and the real estate taxes, we want to go back up here to just looking at the charge for principal and interest. So I want to compare this number and this number. So the 538.33 is the payment for principal and interest on a 30-year note, and this one is the payment for principal and interest on a 15-year note. The payment is higher, but let's see where the difference really lies. Let's calculate how much interest we'll pay for this 15-year loan. So if we've been paying $771.69 12 times a year for 15 years, then the total cost of this loan, $771.69 times 12 times 15, gives us $138,904.20. 9.04.20. So that's the total cost of the loan. We want to know how much of that is directed to interest. So I'm going to take that total and I'm going to subtract 80,750, the amount that we actually borrowed. And we end up with 58,000 $154.20. So even though our monthly payment was higher, look at the difference in the amount of interest that we pay. There is a vast difference to the cost of a 30-year note versus the cost of a 15-year note. You can also decrease the amount of interest that you pay by increasing your initial down payment. Remember on our initial down payment up here, it was interest free. We did not pay that to the lender. We paid that directly to the price of the home. So if you can increase your down payment, that will decrease the amount of interest that you pay. In addition, a shorter note will vastly decrease the amount of interest that you pay. However, there are some other strategies. If a shorter note makes your monthly budget a little bit tight, you can certainly take out a 30-year loan and then when possible, pay it as if it were a 15-year charge. And I'm gonna show you the difference that you can make on paying just a little bit extra on your loan, whether it's a car loan or a home loan, it makes a big difference. We'll do that in another video. But for now, example two, do an experiment. Go shopping in your neighborhood of choice. Find out the price of your dream home, or maybe just go find the price of your practical home, right? Look up current mortgage interest rates. Research the cost of real estate taxes and homeowners insurance. How much would your dream home cost you per month? Is that feasible for your current budget? How about when you finish your degree and you're working in your career field? How can you start planning now for that opportunity? Never hurts to start saving for a down payment, but now with this formula, you've got the tools at your fingertips to convert the price of your home into a monthly payment. And you also know there needs to be a little bit of wiggle room in your budget to pay those real estate taxes and homeowner's insurance. But I hope you experiment with that because it's... Um, really educational and it helps you to understand what type of a home you can afford. So in the next video, again, we'll talk about some strategies for avoiding paying um, this, um, this grand amount for interest.